Okay, let's get started. Ghosts are real. That much I know. Hey horror freaks, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda. If this is the first time here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get a notification every single time that I post a video and I post every single week. So you can see from the title, today's video is going to be my full reel with spoilers of the last Voyage of the Demeter. Voyage, Voyage, I, being honest, I have no idea how it's actually pronounced, but you can see we're having the review. Now, as always, all my reviews are with spoilers. If you don't want them, just to see if this was worth it or not on the description box down below, there you're going to find my spoiler free review because I'll like give you guys the two options. So giving that little disclaimer, let's get into the video. Now, this film is an adaptation of the seventh chapter of Bram Stoker's novel Dracula, The Captain's Log. And it follows a crew sailing from Carpathia to England, find that they are carrying a very dangerous cargo. And to give a brief summary, the film opens with the Demeter arriving to the coast on October 6th. One of the officers is frightened and he says that he doesn't want to go up there again to the ship. But we are never shown what he saw. But if you read the novel or if you have seen any of the other adaptations of the book, you have an idea of what he actually saw. The captain's log is found and when they opened the diary and they start reading, we are then brought back to July 6th, that is the day that Demeter leaves from Carpathia all the way to England. It's almost a whole month of travel and we have the introduction of the characters and we see all these boxes that they've been fitting into the Demeter and we have the introduction of the crew. We have the protagonist that is a doctor, his name is Clement. And he is greeted by the captain's grandson. He is showing him the whole ship. But when one of the crew members sees a dragon stamp in one of the boxes, he says that the devil is in the ship and he will be no longer traveling with them. And we have five boxes with the same mark. Once again, if you read the novel or if you have seen one of the adaptations, you know what is in there. Once that crew member leaves, we have the Demeter leaving and for the first few nights, everything is fine until something starts to happen in the boat. One of the boxes falls from the bodega and when it gets open, all that it has is soil and there's a woman inside. Clement tries to save her by doing blood transfusions because she has an infection and she is very sick, but we have no idea what is happening. Well, no idea, right? Well, because it's quickly revealed that that girl was a Dracula's snack for the travel. And now that she's gone, that's when he starts killing the crew. Like I said, the, the trip is a whole month, but he doesn't kill every single night. He kills every few nights, one or two. At first, he kills all the animals that were on the ship that they were supposed to be the food of the crew. And so now they don't have that much food as before, making the situation even worse. Of course, one by one, they're going to be killed one way or another by Dracula. And we're going to be having at the end, we have the captain, we have Clement, and the girl that is Anne and it's at the last moments that the captain is killed by Dracula he is the one that gets tied to the ship's wheel this is something that is also mentioned on the novel and that's what I said if you read the novel you know what the officer at the beginning found because what he sees is the captain being tied to it but of course because of the movement he's not on the same position and of course it's not a pretty thing to see being completely honest and we have the last moment clement and anne they jump from the ship and they trap dracula and the ship goes all the way alone to the coast and according to everyone there was no survivors this is what has been told from the very beginning that the demeter appear without a crew and the captain dead in the ship right and and clement are in the water and when we see her you know that she turned into vampire. You can see it in her eyes and how pale she looks, but she decides to die because she doesn't want to be that creature. Once the sunrise arrives, she gets on fire and she dies, meaning that the only survivor was actually Clement, but he never says anything. He doesn't go to the newspaper. He doesn't say to anyone that he was part of the crew. And when he is in a bar, he feels that is something there. Something is watching him. And 
guess who it is? Is Dracula now wandering in town? And the last shot and scene of the film is basically Dracula wandering around and then disappearing and Clement saying that he will not stop until he ends the beast. And that's how the film ends. Now getting into my review and things that I like it and dislike it. First, things that I like it. The attention to the details. The ship is real. And it's so damn gorgeous. That's a very, very beautiful ship. And the fact that they are actual sets, even better. And the attention to the details. It's amazing. And also the practical effects and the makeup. We don't have that much gore. I was expecting a little bit more blood. But when we have those moments, although they are little, they are actually pretty good. So they compensate a little bit. And also the score. I think that the score is so damn powerful and it fits so perfectly the story that I love it. By the end of the film, the first thing that I saw was like, yeah, the score was the thing I like it the most. It's so fitting and powerful and it's the type of music that wants to evoke emotions and fits perfectly with every single scene. But after that, that's about it. Probably you have seen now that this film doesn't have good reviews. They're mostly mixed, but they are mostly leaning to the negative side. In my case, I'm not saying that I did not enjoy the film because I did. I did enjoy the film. But the problem is, first, the film is almost two hours long. And in my opinion, it should have been way shorter. Because the story is pretty simple. I check with my book since I own a copy of the the novel, to see how many differences they were between the book and the film. And yes, there are details that are left behind. There are some things that are changed. But in the essence, the story is the same. It's a pretty short chapter, meaning that there's not too much to tell. But unfortunately, they try to drag those nights so long and so much that it turning the film for some moments a little bit boring. And also turning a little bit repetitive with what was happening there was nothing outstanding of it until I could say the very end that it's probably one of the best moments of the film that is when we have that last encounter of Dracula with the captain and in Clement but for the rest when they die it's like oh one oh another one oh there's nothing to feel about it and that was probably the thing I noticed the most the film is unable to provoke or to bring any type of emotion it's very flat. The script, not that good to be honest. We have a moment where we have Clement and he's doing the speech for getting himself into Dracula. And I don't know what happened there, but that moment it didn't precisely work as it was supposed to. And all the characters, they were pretty flat. The only character and the only performance that is actually outstanding and the best one is the captain. He is a very good actor already. I know him as Sir Davos from Game of Thrones. And seeing him as the captain, even with the fact I knew what was going to happen to him, I was still so sad. His scenes were the only ones that you could see the fear, the determination of being the leader of the ship, even with the circumstances, the sadness, the despair. He loses his grandson to Dracula. And you can really feel and see his sadness and emotions. It was a very sad moment I felt for him. And that's what I want. Characters that evoke emotions. But for the rest of the characters, that didn't happen. When it comes to Dracula, he has a very little to no time screen. I am not complaining because we have seen villains in the past that they do not need that much screen time to be remembered and to make an impact in the film. But in the case of this Dracula in particular, he's not intimidating. He is not scary. He doesn't evoke that fear and that aura of power because we are aware of how powerful Dracula is both as a monster and in his human form. But we never reach that point of being powerful as in this film. We always see him as the creature, something that I like it to see, the fact that we're not seeing him just like the human. He is completely in the monster's form. It was very similar to Nosferatu in terms of the face. It was very similar. And I really like the design, but it wasn't powerful. And also the film lacked that sense of fear and claustrophobic. We are in the middle of the ocean. 
with a creature and we have nowhere to go. You're supposed to make me feel scared, anxious, but it's unable to do that. Even with the fact that these sets are there. The film had a lot of potential, being completely honest. And something that I did like it was the ending. Because something that I said was that I was expecting for that to happen. To see Dracula wandering around. And at least I got that, so I am happy. Did I dislike the film? No, I didn't. But I cannot also say that the film was excellent because it wasn't. But most likely, I think I will be rewatching it once it's available on video on demand because I really want to rewatch it because at the end of the day, I didn't dislike it. It's a little bit longer than it's supposed to be, maybe a little bit boring by moments, but I didn't hate it. And like I said, the score and the sets, they are all worth it for me. But for the rest, I think that the film had the potential to be very, very good. But it has some misses. But for the rest, I think the film, it's worth giving the chance. Because I feel that people are going to have different opinions. I don't feel that every single person is going to dislike this film. But like I said, I didn't. I just admit the fact that the film is not as good as it could have been. But I still enjoyed my time watching it and I do not regret it. Now, as for my rating, I will say that this film is a 2.5 out of 5 and a 6 out of 10. It's not that bad either. Like I said, I'm not hating the film, but I feel that some people is being way too harsh on this one. I have read some reviews that they're destroying the film and I'm like, "Mm, we have seen worse. We have seen worse. So this is not so bad. So I think that this is all for my review and my opinion. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below what do you thought. Which one is your favorite adaptation of Dracula? So like I said, I have a good time. It wasn't the best one, but I did not hate it. But well, thank you so much for watching. And I'm going to see you guys on my next video. Bye. That much I know.